everyone. Welcome to my talk today. And the author of this work is Constantinus Pellegrinis from University of Pittsburgh, but he's expecting a baby soon, so he couldn't come here today. So I'll be presenting his work on urban infrastructure interfaces on behalf of Costas. And my name is Hyuna, and I'm a student at Carnegie Mellon University. So here's the roadmap of today's talk. And let's start with the problem definition. Um, the United Nations predicted that by year 2050, more than 70% of the population will be living in the cities. So more people in the city means more cars on the streets. And more cars on the streets means higher demand for the parking spaces. And the typical way to balance the demand and the supply of the parking spaces is to regulate them through some appropriate pricing. Then the revenue from the metered parking zone can be reinvested to the infrastructures in the city. So in the metered parking zones, there are parking meters where the drivers can use to pay for their parking. And the traditional parking meters like this accept only the coins, the quarters, and the drivers are known to hate them because they have to carry enough amount of coins to pay for their parking. But thanks to the technology, new type of parking meter system called pay-by-play parking meters started to be installed in the cities, and they now can accept various coin denominations and also the credit cards. So here, the research question is, does this new type of parking meter system have any impact on the driver's behavior? So the hypothesis that we set in the study for examination is that the pay-by-plate parking meters has led to higher compliance of the drivers with the parking ordinances. The theory behind this hypothesis is that um, inability of the drivers to pay for their parking or comply with the parking rules is not because they don't want to pay for the parking, but it's simply because they don't have enough coins to pay for the parking. So let's look at the experimental setup. To examine our hypothesis, we utilized two sources of information. And the first one is the parking ticket or the parking citation issued by the Par Pittsburgh Parking Authority. So this is a measure of the driver's compliance with the parking rules. And the second information is the parking log from the pay-by-plate parking meters. And we use this information to further analyze the behavior of the drivers. So this is a map of Pittsburgh. And in the city of Pittsburgh, the pay-by-plate parking meters were installed in July 2012 in the areas of Shadyside, Square Hill, Oakland, and downtown. And we will call these areas as group one areas. So after July 2012, group one areas started to use a new parking meter system. And later in May 2013, Brooklyn got their new pay-by-play parking meter and we will call this area as group two area. So after May 2013, Brooklyn started to use pay-by-plate parking meters. So if we study the time period before May 2013 and compare the group one area where there was change in the parking meter system and compare, the, and compare it with the group two area, where there was no change in the parking meter system, we will be able to examine our hypothesis. So what is the method that we can use to apply this kind of approach? So the method that we used in our study is called difference in differences method. This is um, adapted from the econometrics literature. So given control and the treatment, this method tries to determine whether the treatment had any impact on the subject or not. So here is a simple diagram. So we have two observations of the control and the treatment before the application of the treatment and also after the application of the treatment. And we will call the difference between the control and the treatment 
before the application as delta 1 and after the application as delta 2 here. Then the difference in differences estimate value is defined as the difference between delta 2 and delta 1. And if this value is greater than 0, we say that the treatment had a positive impact on the subject. So in our case, we examined the time period from January 2011 to May 2013, where the treatment application of the treatment which was achieved in July 2012. And in our case, this is the installation of the pay-by-plate parking meters. So we have January 2011 to July 2012 as the pre-treatment time period and July 2012 to May 2013 as the post-treatment time period. And we can use the group one area as the treatment group because they had changed in the parking meter system. And the group two area serves as some control group because there was no change in the parking meter system. Then the subject of our interest is the parking citation or the parking tickets issued from the Pittsburgh Parking Authority, which is a direct measure of the compliance of the drivers with the parking rules. So let's look at the result. So here is a table of the difference in differences estimate values for the areas of group one. So we see that all of the values are negative. So this means that the treatment had a negative impact on the subject. So in other words, installation of the pay-by-plate parking meters has led to reduction in the parking citations in the Pittsburgh. So it means that it actually led to higher compliance of the drivers with the parking rules. And we see that in the Auckland area, the impact was the greatest. And what's interesting here is that Auckland is where the parking rate is the highest. So we are assuming that if, there, if the parking rate is high, it means more coins are required for the drivers to pay for their parking, meaning that there's higher probability that the drivers will not have enough coins to pay for their parking. Thus, they have to violate the parking rules. But after installation of the parking meters, the drivers were able to avoid this kind of unwanted situation of running out of the coins. So they were able to comply with the parking rules much better. So as conclusion in this study, we formulated a hypothesis that installation of pay-by-plate parking meters has led to higher compliance with the parking rules. And our observation actually supported our hypothesis and told us that the new type of parking meters has had a positive impact on the driver's behavior. So we showed an evidence that effective infrastructures in the cities can actually lead to positive change in the user's behavior. So we are hoping that designing of some effective infrastructures gains some more attention from the stakeholders involved. Thank you for listening to my talk. And I will be happy to answer some questions that I will be able to answer. But for clearer answers, please contact the author of this work. Thank you. <laughs>